No, they're not into soul winning. They're into doing debates. They're into debates. Why? Because reprobates are filled with debate. That's why. That's what it says in Romans chapter 1. They love to do their debates where they argue with people. God said avoid debate. Avoid contentions. Avoid the strife. Hello, Jeff Dollar here once again. Uh, today I'd like to look into the topic of debates. Uh, Pastor Steven Anderson, as well as the rest of the new IFB, have proclaimed that they do not believe in debates. And they base that on Romans chapter 1 and verse 29, a reading from the King James Version, uh, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Of course, it's talking about those who have been given over by God to a reprobate mind, or as it says in chapter 28, or chapter 1, verse 28 of Romans, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Now, uh, he has said in other places, he includes Calvinists among mm -hmm. them, uh, who are the reprobate, and they, because of that, they like to debate well, let's take a look at the New King James and just to see what the New King James says on this word debate. Where it says in 129, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whispers. Uh, so the word translated debate in Romans chapter 1 and verse 29 in the King James is translated strife in the New King James. So the, the word itself is not describing an organized meeting of, of people to discuss a topic, to uh, wrangle perhaps over a topic. You know, this is something that has happened in church history uh, over uh, many, many years, many, many years ago, and it's been going on ever since. I uh, looked up a few of them. Uh, some of these, what we would call debates over particular issues. Uh, we had the Council of Chalcedon. I, I should have written down the dates here, but I didn't. But it goes a, lo a long way back. Uh, this this uh, particular council debated about the uh, humanity and d the human and divine nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a lot of controversy uh, concerning uh, the humanity of Christ versus the divinity of Christ. And that they came to conclusion in uh, that, that particular council. There was debating going on there. Uh, the Council of Nicaea, Arianism, from which the Jehovah's Witnesses have, have come from, uh, who denied the deity of Christ. Uh, they proclaim that, that Jesus is the, uh, My, Michael the Archangel, uh, that he is not divine, he is not to be worshipped. Uh, Arianism was was creeping up within the church and that had to be dealt with so they had debates about that and we uh, go back to the reformation you have luther and eck who at the leipzig debate debated the, the 95 theses that luther had put out and be, the debate between luther and erasmus over the bondage of the will versus the freedom of the will and this there's many many other topics you could get on is that is that inherently sinful according to Mr. Anderson, that a group of Christians will get together and one side take one, one particular part of an issue, side of an issue, the other side take the other side of an issue, and go back and forth in an organized fashion, in a moderated fashion, in, a, in an actual debate. Is that sinful, something to be avoided? Uh, no, well, let's take a look in the Bible. Uh, Acts chapter 15. Uh, if you have a Bible, I would encourage you to turn there. You can read it with me. I'm going to be reading from the King James or the, the New King James Bible. But Acts chapter 15, a very interesting occurrence here. Uh, this was a church council, and the issue was the issue of circumcision. The uh, church had to deal with uh, the church, which was primarily Jewish. All the disciples were Jewish. The early 
converts were Jewish. Uh, as, as you had the Apostle Paul going out and evangelizing, uh, you had uh, you, you begin to see Gentiles coming into the church, and this caused a lot of strife. You know, the, the Jewish believers didn't know what to do with these Gentiles. This was something new to them. Uh, should, should we just accept them? Or do they need to be, to be circumcised and follow after the law of Moses as we do in order then to be accepted in the church and to be accepted as Christians? And some of them were actual Judaizers where they taught that you had to be circumcised to be saved. So there was debate about this, and we find that coming in, in Acts chapter 15. Okay, what I'd like for you to look at in Acts chapter 15 is verse 6, starting in verse 6. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So you, you have here uh, Peter involved in this. You have Paul involved in this. Uh, you have the elders and the apostles together sitting down to decide this issue. And there was much dispute. There was going back and forth. This is what we would call debate. So we have debate in the scriptures. And this debate was an, done in an organized fashion. The elders and the, the apostles came together. And I'm sure that there was not chaos in this meeting where we had people just simply screaming at one another. But there was a moderated back and forth concerning this issue. One side would present their argument, and the other side would present their argument. And then they came to a conclusion in verse 18. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. So then, they had this discussion, which is, which is described as much disputing in verse 7. Uh, the, the, uh, when there had been much dispute Peter said to them. So we have this in the scriptures. We have this done in an organized fashion. You have it done with the apostles. So then, is debate in the sense that we know it inherently wrong? Obviously not. The debate of Romans chapter 1 is entirely different from the debate in Acts chapter 15. Uh, the debate in Romans chapter 1 has to deal with strife or having a contentious spirit, always looking for a fight always uh, all ready, ready to go at it. Now that is something that, that is condemned. Not an organized debate to come to a conclusion. Uh, so then we're, we're left here with, with the idea as uh, the question as to why would the new IFB and Mr. Anderson in particular come up with this idea that debate is forbidden. Well, I believe personally, and then once again, I'm, I'm not able to get in people's hearts, so I, I can't uh, tell their motivations, but I, I can say that I, I, I believe this is possibly the case, that Mr. Anderson and the new IFB realize that if they were actually to stand in a debate, say with James White, over the issue of the King James Bible, the King James onlyism, or uh, repentance or or uh, the reprobate doctrine or any of any of those things which are unique among the, the new IFB people if they were to actually have to endure a moderated debate uh, they would be destroyed they did, they would not have a leg to stand on scripturally they would not be able to stand in a debate and the reason I know this is that I went to the same college as Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson attended Hiles Anderson College. I did uh, much earlier than what he did. Uh, and one thing I discovered that once I left the college, I, I left the college uh, because of financial reasons. I intended to go back. Uh, but in the, in the meantime, in, in between that, I never did make it back permanently. I did did go back. Uh, to, I thought I had a job, but it did, did not pan out. Uh, so I had to return back home. Uh, but in the meantime, I was taking credits at another college, and issues would come up. This was not a college where they had the screws turned tightly in your mind and you could not think. We were required to think. 
uh, we, there, we were required to discuss issues among each other. And I recall one of the issues was the issues of baptism. Uh, some of them were discussing baptism by sprinkling or by immersion or infant baptism. And then they asked me, uh, Jeff, uh, wh what's your position on baptism? And Are you settled on the issue? And I said, oh yes, of course I'm settled on the issue. Well, the reason I was settled on the issue is that I had been told what to think and I believed what Jack Hiles taught. Not because I believed it for myself, uh, several years later, I had to sit down and, just, and study the issue out for myself, and I came to my own conclusion. But when I was in college, I didn't have that right. I was told what to believe, and I dared not question my teachers. And that's the, the same attitude you have in new IFB. Uh, just see how, how many times people are tossed out of the church. You know, that's uh, uh, or perhaps... I believe the reason behind that, that idea of not debating, uh, that they just simply do not have the capacity to debate. They do not believe in studying theology or apologetics or the basics of Christian doctrine. Uh, you've got to go right straight down the line with the new IFB doctrine, which, are, which is uh, it's deviant doctrine. It is heretical doctrine in many ways. There's doctrine of repentance, the reprobate doctrine, the King James only isn't that you can only be saved by someone quoting to you the King James Bible. The list can go on and on and on. And of course, these doctrines are all concocted by Mr. Anderson. And uh, these, these, the rest of, of these people have to fall in line with that. And if they don't, they'll be out the door. But they cannot actually debate it because they're told debate's wrong, debate's sinful. No, the reason they do that is they do not want to have to give answer uh, when the question comes up to them. It's whenever they're questioned, uh, it's a very easy thing for a pastor to say, the, the pulpit's mine, you don't question what I preach. That's exactly what I heard in several of the churches that I was involved in when I was in that type of movement. Uh, so then, uh, there wasn't a whole lot to say on this except that, that um, I believe that this idea is wrong and that uh, I, I am, am not a pr apologist. I am a pastor. I work a full-time job along with my pastor. I am willing to engage any of these fellows when it comes to these issues. You know, when uh, I, I'm not a Greek scholar. I mean, I'm able to, to look at the, my dictionaries and, and figure a few things out. I had the Greek and I had some of the Hebrew, so I'm able to, to function with it, but I'm, I'm not proficient as, as a scholar would be. However, uh, I'd be willing to sit down and talk with these fellows over these issues. Uh, they, I'm willing to, to debate them on them. Uh, I, I am not a, a perhaps the best spoken person, uh, but I'm willing to sit down and discuss them. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with taking two sides of an issue where two believers might have a, a, a disagreement and hashing back and forth, and maybe not for the benefit of yourself, but for the, for the benefit of others to, to hear, especially when you have two well-learned people on a particular topic taking opposite sides uh, and presenting these sides. A person can sit and listen and actually learn, but you won't find that in New IFB. Uh, let me recommend that if you are involved in this particular movement, that you examine it with the scripture. And do not be afraid to ask questions. And when you ask your questions and they shut you down, that will show you that you are not in the biblical church. Once again, I'd like to thank you for your time. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. And may the Lord bless you in your search for